Hi everybody, uh, for those donors that have um, helped me in the in processing Rick's papers, I thought it'd be kind of interesting um, to share with you how archivists look at personal papers, especially uh, papers from writers. So, uh, Rick's collection is, is quite large and I have to say, um, I have a lot of respect for Rick because he was a very prolific writer. This man was truly dedicated to the art of writing. So he was constantly writing, not just his novels that many, many were published, but novels that have not been published. And then, of course, the uh, large amount of scripts he's written, and really, I mean, just great stuff that just never came to fruition, especially, especially his webisodes um, that he did with uh, Streamsland. Unbelievable stuff. Um, but also, um, a large amount of his short stories ended up in uh, uh, anthologies. So, one of the really um, challenging aspects of organizing an author's paper is the archivist is always seeking to find the original order, especially if a collection has no order. Um, so, Rick Hodla, when he would uh, write his papers, have his manuscripts, um, First of all, number one, it was not unusual that Rick would actually give uh, a fan or a writer, say, here's my manuscript, I'll go ahead and keep it. Who knows? So I know his papers are all over the place, which is great. He's, he was such a, a generous man. So this collection, although very large, has gaps. So I recognize that right away, uh, which is fine. I understand how that, how that may happen. Um, he has a massive amount of short stories that have been published and a large amount that have been not. So let's just talk about his published uh, short stories. So um, he, um, in uh, the book Night Visions, I think I have it here somewhere. I'm also a collector of Rick's books. I don't have them all. I will someday have them all. So Night Visions, uh, this is my copy. And I use the copies that I have that really help me understand um, Rick's thinking and what he was publishing and when they were published. The really sad thing is that, you know, you think a guy's going to live forever. You think he's going to be like always there and, and he isn't. So the, the opportunity to, to talk to, although I talk to Rick all the time when I'm working on these, um, to have him face to face, uh, he's not here. So I, I rely on, um, his widow, um, uh, Holly Newstein. Uh, on sometimes I have questions and she's really great about answering them. So anyways, so we got Night Visions, okay? And he wrote a number of short stories for Night Visions. Um, a short story that was not, say, published in a journal, published in a, a journal, but like a magazine. Um, there's so many magazines out there, horror writing and, and thrillers. And so he would, you know, write a short story that would be published in a, in a magazine and then it would end up being published again, maybe in an anthology. Night Visions is interesting because he, um, I have uh, copies of the manuscripts of his Night Visions, um, and um, he really focused on the Little Brother series. So in, in Night Visions, there were a number of authors that were invited to publish uh, Introduction by F. Paul Wilson, uh, so a number of original stories by wonderful authors um, like Thomas Tessier, James Kisner. And Rick Hodla. So Rick Hodla has all these wonderful short stories he did for Night Visions. Introduction to his, I can never pronounce this, so you have to forgive me, but his uh, Unsingahunk, I don't know, maybe saying it wrong, but Chrysalis, Little Brother, Little Brother Speaks, um, Love on the Rocks, Deal with the Devil's Red Men, The Birch Whistle. All, all done, The Birch Whistle. All done for Night Visions. Okay, super. So I have all those. I have all those, those little short stories and even the... Um, I think the um, press for uh, Night Visions. So as an archivist, I know he put those together for Night Visions. Short stories, not a collection of his short stories, but short stories in a anthology book with other authors. So I keep those together. Uh, many of those were written in 1990. The book was published in 91. Keep them together because that's how they were created. Now, I come across, of course, Occasional Demons. Awesome book. I have this and my own um, box copy. Oh, how exciting. Had that for years. He published this in 2010. So in this Occasional Demon, this book is actually all of Rick's short stories that he contributed. I mean, well, 
not all, he's, he's written so much, but specific short stories that, that have been published already, and he's gathered them together and put them in his own uh, anthology, an own collection of Rick Hodla short stories. And in here, he has, um, there's a list of all the short stories he's done and where they were previously published. Um, Life's House Hauntings, published in, in uh, Bad News, published in Shelf Life, Shock Rock 2, Terminal Freight, published so many. Um, and then his uh, little brother stories, which were uh, published in uh, Night Visions, is now published again. So here's how archivists think. They're like, oh my God, I've got all these short stories. And I've had all his little brother's short stories. But I can't take them out of my Night Visions group and put them in here. Can't do that. Because in the collections thus far, I only found his short stories of Little Brothers and all that Native American stuff in Night Visions. So I'm sitting here at night thinking at 2 in the morning like, oh my gosh. Well, I've got many of his short stories that were published in other publications that ended up in Occasional Demons. But I don't have a group like all the short stories that he put together and sent out to the publishers to put in Occasional Demons. If I had like a thick group of uh, short stories all together where Rick put together and, and sent them to, I think you will see whether published that, Cemetery Dance, of course. Let's say um, Cemetery Dance wanted all these and he put them together and he made copies and he kept a, a, you know, a thick manuscript of all the short stories that he's going to ask now Cemetery Dance to put in Occasional Demons. I could put that actually in the first series in my order of published novels and collections, but I can't because there is no, there is no, from what I can see in his entire collection, a, a manuscript that was sent to uh, Cemetery Dance. He just had all these short stories, got together, he got them to them. I don't know how he did it, but I have nothing like that. So in that series, I do not have Occasional Demons uh, manuscript. What I do have is about... 90% of his short stories that have been published in many um, uh, magazines uh, and they're going to end up in the published short story series but nothing in the collection series or novel series of Occasional Demons. So I was thinking that night like, well, I do have all his, little, well, almost all his little brothers, individual short stories that he specifically did for Night Visions plus uh, his, uh, like his copy of Night Visions. Um, but um, a whole bunch of short stories that ended up in Occasional Demons, but they're not going to be put into his first series, which is published novels and collections, you know, and novellas. They're all going to be individualized in the series called Short Stories because they, the ones that I have were specifically, well, I believe were done for the various magazines he's done. So this is what we do, archivists. We're thinking like, okay, I, I, the collection came in some, actually, no, Rick's collection came in no order at all. None. It's just boxes and boxes of stuff. I'm like, okay, I got to, when you, when you, when an archivist gets a collection of papers and there is no order, we have to find the order, the logical order, the way the collections were created. So, so for the collection, the first series, which are the novels and uh, uh, collections and novellas, they're in chronological order. I want the researcher to see Rick's evolution as a writer. What is the first book he written and the last one that was published? That's the evolution of the writer. When I go through his short stories, they too are in the order of their publication dates, the evolution of the writer. It's important to see how a writer evolves. But then again, when I have uh, unpublished short stories, okay, they're in alphabetical order now because they haven't been published, so alphabetical order. Um, and that, So we think like that. So anyways, for two days, I've been working on the short stories thinking, okay, I want to make sure I find the logical order, night vision, going to put them together in the short story series. Occasional Demons, I don't have the original manuscript he, that I, I'm sure as a writer he put together and sent to Cemetery Dance. I have the individual. So I put them in short stories, but I'll notate um, where those originally were published and how they 
eventually ended up in occasional demons. So I, I think that's, that makes sense to me. Anyways, so this is what we do. Now, when it's all said and done and everything is in boxes, I go through those boxes now one at a time individually and I look at them and I create an index. So the index, uh, say somebody's interested in one of his short stories, um, and and there may be references to that short story in the short stories section, but there may be some references in some letters. You know, maybe you know, I, there may be references to stories throughout the collection. And I think if a researcher is interested in in the process of one of his stories and the way the collection is organized based on creation date and logical order, there may be references to that title in other parts. So we like to direct that researcher to those other files, hence finding aids. So anyways, that's my story as an archivist. That's what I'm thinking. Just thought you may be interested. Uh, have a good night and then I'll see you again.